Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and there is no more need to go in circles with people that are refusing to acknowledge month over month and year to date data trends. Now, either people can continue to ignore the direction, the current direction of the housing market, or they can choose to review the data and adjust. But going in circles with people now is no longer needed. And here's the other cool thing. Despite new listings being down 12%, inventory continues to surge month after month after month. And the reason that is, you guys, is demand has been completely destroyed. And as, and the longer that these homes sit on the market and the days on the market or DOM increases, the more likely it is that the prices will continue to drop. Now, this is very important to understand, y'all. The price drops have already begun on a nationwide average scale. In whole, it's down over 4% from June's peak, according to Redfin. However, new homes are down from the April peak 13%. Inventory is up almost triple digits on average 98%. And this is why I keep telling you guys, there is no need to argue. In fact, if you ever talk to a professional and you ask them, what is your opinion of the month over month price sales declines? And they respond, show me one market where your over year price is in, is in decline. Those are people that are generally trying to sell you something. The whole narrative of year over year price increase is bust. We're under a new trajectory in the housing market. You can't look at year over year on all of the data. You have to take into account YTD month over month and even week over week to properly understand the data trends. So all of these professionals and these lead chasing YouTubers, they're coming to the end of their road. Once January, 2023 hits, maybe even before that, that whole narrative of year over year price growth is gone. So what to do? then, right? So just remember what I'm saying. You guys always come at people with month over month data so that you can clearly show them price trends, inventory trends, demand trends. There's so many trends now. No more arguing. We're just going to continue to move forward. We're going to continue to talk about the solution and we're going to continue to get out of the problem. And what we're going to do today, you guys, is read a Redfin article that's titled Housing Market Update. Newly listed homes fall most since 2020 as sellers pull back. And again, the most incredible thing about this is listings are down 12%, yet inventory is absolutely surging. And again, that's demonstrating demand has been killed, right? And it also demonstrates to me, and it also should kind of start showing you that this bubble, right? Excessive equity growth, this bubble was in fact created from hyper demand. Think of this, low rates equals floodgates. So when we have low rates, the Federal Reserve opens the floodgates to demand. It really doesn't matter how much supply we have. If demand, if we have hyper demand, that is also breaking fundamentals. So essentially, that's why the housing market is going to come crashing down. Not only the excessive equity growth, the way the bubble was formed. When you take all of those things out of the equation, it's going to come crashing down. But let's get started on this article. But before I do, remember you guys, and I hate saying this all the time because it drives me absolutely crazy. But please like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and shoot me a comment below. I won't go into my bio. I know that makes some of you guys crazy. I just want to make everyone happy. So let's get started on this article right now. All right. So we have our updated weekly report from Redfin. I love, I know that. So a lot of people tell me, you know, Travis, why are you talking about Zillow? Why are you talking about Redfin? You should boycott them, you know, for all the things I did. And I get that, but I'm not so foolish as to not understand that these are massive platforms with massive amounts of data. So what I'm saying is, is take advantage of Redfin and Zillow and their platforms don't get taken advantage of. Do y'all see what I'm saying? So here's their data, but understand who you're reading it from. Because quite frankly, we don't have a lot of options here, right? I mean, there's only so many companies that has nationwide data of this magnitude. But let's continue reading, okay? New listings are down 12% from a year ago as sellers respond to waning home buyer demand. Still, overall housing supply is on the rise. A sign that buyers are pulling back more than sellers. That's key, guys. 
more homeowners are holding off on selling as the housing market cools, fueling the largest decline in home listings in more than two years. New listings on homes for sale dropped 12% year over year during the four weeks ending August 7th, the steepest decline since June 2020. Homeowners are staying put in part because home buyer demand is slowed due to higher mortgage rates. Pending home sales are down 16% from a year ago. Some homeowners are also experiencing an effect called rate lock, in which they're hesitant to buy a new home since it would mean paying a significantly higher mortgage rate, not to mention a payment because it's an overvalued house, but whatever. Despite the decrease in new listings, overall supply continues to grow. That's bingo right there. That trend right there is signaling demand is way lower than supply right now. A sign that homeowners are pulling back more than home sellers. The total number of home sales is up 4% year over year. That's good news for buyers who can afford to remain in the market because it means the housing shortage is easing and there are more homes to choose from. And the key here, guys, that I want you to take away is the potential homeowners that can afford to be in this market like us. I am financially ready. I can buy a house right now, but I am demonstrating discipline and self-control because I believe that these trends will continue, right? We've already have the data on our side now, and I believe that they're going to continue into 2023. After that, I have no idea what's going to go on because I'm super afraid of the political pressures and that the Federal Reserve, uh, as soon as they pivot, it's obviously going to bring demand back. So I'll have a conclusion on what I believe that people should be doing in the meantime, but let's finish this. Buyers are backing off due to rising housing costs and sellers are holding back because they realize they won't get the bidding war they would have gotten six months ago. The good news is this is bringing balance to the market. If mortgage rates resume their downward trajectory, more buyers and sellers could get back in the game. So again, as I was telling you guys in March and April, when I first started doing these vlogs full time, unaffordability is going to be the primary factor at transitioning this housing market from a seller's market into a buyer's market. And look at what has happened. Unaffordability is number one. Now, here's, here's the other thing, you guys. Some people get it wrong because they have leads to sell, right? And they're, they're spewing uh, inaccurate influence and essentially saying, continue to buy if it fits this little box right here. What I'm saying is, is make sure all that things hit that box right there and then wait because prices are going down and inventory is shooting up. Duh, right? I mean, is that really so hard to understand? And I'm also saying be way more cautious right now versus overly optimistic. And here's the primary reason why. No one knows what's going to happen really because we've not been through this before, right? This is a, this is a COVID housing market. We've never gone through this. So a lot of the rules and a lot of the trends, it's a little bit conflicting because again, I believe it's because all the money we pumped into our economy. And as a result of all that money, data is all over the place right now, but nevertheless, we have to understand what's going on. 41 year high runaway inflation, massively overvalued properties, right? Going up in just two years, nearly 40 percent, which is a similar bubble as the last housing crash we're in, in half the time. What do you guys think is going to happen, right? So again, remember, I'm also saying that this year we're going to have enough, as much inventory as we had pre-pandemic. So when we have as much inventory we had pre-pandemic, we start seeing unemployment rates rise. We start, we get the confirmed recession. Don't y'all believe that the housing market is going to fall apart even quicker and even more? right? I believe that. And that's why I'm planning to prepare in November. And my target purchase month is February of 2023. Now, obviously it's only August, so things could change and I will adapt my plan, but I want to remain transparent with you on what my goals are and why those goals are my goals. So essentially I'm going to start after midterms. Okay. I'm going to start after midterms and I'm going to bring you guys through that entire process. Let's jump back into this information right now. All right, guys, I love this part about Redfin. This is the leading indicators of home buying activity. And again, you guys, I get it. People say boycott them, boycott them. But, you know, this data is, you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, I'm not buying anything from Redfin. I know I give them a little bit of exposure, but some, of, some people don't even know they can get information past Zillow or Redfin. So we have to try to tap into that user base because, again, uh, you know, and this is sad. There's a lot of people that are clueless. A lot of people still only go to Zillow, still only go to Redfin. 
it's really frustrating you guys, but nevertheless, at least this is good data. I'm just going to read the, I'm going to read this straight down for you guys, starting with the mortgage rate. So the mortgage rates YTD or year to date, it's up from 3.11%. Okay. Online home searches are down 23%. Y'all see these trends, right? A lot of people, you know, in the YouTube atmosphere refuse to acknowledge these trends or they acknowledge these trends, but still go back to the whole narrative that, Hey, it's still cool because year over year price growth is still up. But the reality is, is yeah, it's going to be up because the first few months of this year, equity was still exploding, right? The fed didn't even start till later on in this year, but whatever guys, you know, it is what it is. Now the seasonally, uh, here's demand right here, demand down 9%. That's pretty big, right? Touring down. This is pretty crazy. Touring down uh, year over year, 20 two percent mortgage applications down 19 percent these are massive changes you guys because remember we're coming out of a red hot housing market red hot so it went from red hot to dead that's a very violent adjustment but take a look at this next data point that i really love okay now this is data based on home sales listed and sold during the period the and i love this this is again this is what i'm saying you guys we don't have to argue we don't have to do debates. We don't have to do live Q and A. We just have to speak to people that are like, that can comprehend this information and not hide it. Okay. To fit their narrative. I absolutely think it's disgusting. It happens all the time, but this is what it says. The median home sales price was 378.089 up 8% year over year. Do you see how it's like, Oh, it's always up year over year. You see that? See, people play this narrative to try to make you feel comfortable to still buy, but prices have declined. Here we go. See, I highlighted that 4.1% from the record high of 395 hit during the four-week period ending June 19th. A year ago, they rose 0.7 during the same period. So do y'all understand what I'm saying now? Here's the thing. If you're an investor, well, first understand this. Primarily who I'm speaking to on my channel is first-time home buyers. Okay. And I'm not hating on investors. I'm not hating on if you've already owned a home. But what I'm saying is, is the first time home buyers are definitely the biggest risk at being taken advantage of. Okay. Now I've seen this happen throughout my entire career. When I started in Texas, I was a loan officer in a market center with Keller Williams for about three years. Then I started, then I became a branch manager over three branches, yada, yada, yada. But during that time in that market center, the realtors would constantly be giving me leads, right? And people to try to qualify for a home loan. What I immediately noticed, and I mean, it's not hard to notice this, but it took me about 10 to 15 applications to finally find one person that was pre qualified. Now my deal was with the realtors and with the people that gave me an opportunity to try to qualify them was I wouldn't leave them hanging. I would not turn my back on them. So I would always put them in something that I called an action plan. And usually the number one thing on that action plan was, is to not get discouraged because when people constantly hear no, or you need to do this better, people get discouraged. Now, the second most important thing was to save your money. And then usually the third and fourth step was something about credit, managing credit card debt and things of that nature. Now that gives me a special ability to understand consumers. And that's why I'm always talking, you know, to new home, to potential new home buyers. Now understand that because there's a certain point where you get enough skills, where you can take certain things to the next level. So when I say don't use your credit cards, Remember, I'm talking to new home buyers that are already in consumer debt. If you're at a consumer debt and you have really good credit, you can actually use your credit card in your favor by leveraging your credit, getting a credit card that gives you cash back. I actually spend almost all of my you know, expenditures on my credit card, but I pay the entire bill off prior to it billing. So the bureaus are never notified that I, you know, I charge it. The balance is always low to the credit bureaus, but it gives me a few hundred dollars a month. So I, you know, once you get to that level, I think that's a very smart move, but you all have to understand that I'm being very cautious because again, the biggest at risk are potential new home buyers. And that's again, really who I'm speaking into. So that's no offense to if you're, you know, you're super savvy about what I'm saying, but you have to understand the reason why I'm doing things and my specific goal. Okay. Which is essentially just to do the best I can to help enlighten people, to protect people and to warn people, right? We have to come up with a an empowerment strategy. Anyways, I get it. I get it.
I'm rambling. Let's get back to this article right now. And we're really going to look at, you know, affordability, guys. And here's the primary reason we're having such a, a violent transition. You know, the red line represents 2022, blue 2021, gray is 2020. Look at the average mortgage payment, $2,290. Okay. Now this is trended downward. Okay. This is a, what I would consider it's kind of up and down, but it's still overall a little bit of a trend, right? It's kind of gone up a little bit. I believe it's gone up a little bit here just because the fear of missing out went back into the buyer's market when the job numbers came out and you see a little blip right there. I think that's what that is. It's an emotional thing. But nevertheless, look at how high, see, this is kind of, this could be a good gap, right? So a gap between 2020 and 21, it's a little bit more reasonable with mortgage payment, but the gap from 2021 to 2022, look at this gap. This is crazy. This is the reason why we're having such a strong and violent slowdown. And it also should tell you guys, and this is how I really want to conclude this video. It should also continue to remind you guys that the reason we're in this housing market bubble or, you know, excessive equity growth is because of hyper demand, not limited supply. And when you remove the demand from the hyper demand bubble, it's going to pop right? In my opinion, it's going to pop. And the reason it's going to pop is because the level of equity growth, if equity only went up 15, say 15, 20%, okay, still breaking fundamentals, but a little bit, you know, not as much. But the fact that we're like 40% in some metro areas, a hundred percent equity growth in two years, come on guys, right? It doesn't take a genius to understand what's about to happen or what's going to continue to happen. Now, having said that, here's how I want you guys to move forward after watching this video. This is a mindset. Keep in mind, this is a mindset. Okay. I want you guys to look at 2023 as the last year in your lifetime that you'll be able to find the deal of your dreams. And if you have that mindset and if you triple down on your preparation right now, what harm is that? You're going to be a stud buyer. You're going to be able to find possibly, in my opinion, the deal of your dreams. Now, maybe that doesn't happen, right? But again, that's why I'm saying have that mindset, right? Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. If you have that mindset where 2023 is the last opportunity, then you're going to be a winner, okay? So be patient, you guys. Maintain self-control. Understand that these trends are going to continue. Why? Inflation. 40 year high inflation. Okay. The Fed's not pivoted yet. They got to get inflation under control. That's a fact. Now, you guys, I really hope you got some value from this video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.